Hi everybody, it's Kim West, the Sleep Lady. And on this episode of the Gentle Parenting Show, we are talking, or I'm talking with my colleague, fellow gentle sleep coach and gentle potty coach and certified positive discipline um, uh, coach, Alexis Grinelli. She and I want to talk with you about why potty training boot camps don't work for everyone. Because we do know that, you know, one size does not fit all, and particularly when it comes to raising our children. <laughs> and so I wanted to, or Alexis is also encouraging me to tell you briefly the story and the struggle I had with um, sleep or potty training my older daughter. She granted I waited too long because when I feel like she showed readiness, I was in the throes of nausea, deep and long, um, with pregnancy of my second daughter. So um, I put it off. And for right or wrong, I did what I could best handle at the time. Uh, And they only had this three-day approach of potty training in a boot camp. I I did try it when the nausea got a little bit better, but I still was quite nauseous and it was miserable, unsuccessful. Totally, I felt like we were butting heads and um, I was exhausted, nauseous and wanting to cry. And she was, and I said, forget it. Um, Putting the diaper back on, we'll deal with this later when we're all feeling better. Um, and again, at that time, there was literally one book that you went to the library to get, to get, and I'd forgotten it, what the name was, but it was something like, you know, potty train your child in three days, um, something like a little short, small paperback. And it was the go-to book. And then I, you know, put it aside, kept myself in denial, whatever, and uh, had my second child. My mother-in-law came over to visit um, she or to help. And she was appalled that my older daughter was in a diaper. And while I was taking a nap with my newborn, I forced her to sit on the toilet um, for I don't know how long um, until I came down, found out what was happening and said, oh, no, 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 we don't, we don't do that. Um, uh, Just like my my mom told my grandmother who slapped my hand when I was drawing with my left hand. Oh, no, 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 we don't do that. <laughs> and, um, but my child then ended up being pretty traumatized about the potty and holding in her poops. And we just went down a much longer potty training struggle road <laughs> than I ever wanted to. Um, and so I took a very different approach with my second child. But before we talk about that, Alexis, I know you had kind of a similar, but not exactly the same story with your daughter. Well, I think it's so funny because maybe we did it with years of difference, right? But in the end, it just kind of makes me realize that the parent-child struggle is always fundamentally the same, Mm -hmm. right? So I don't know how all of you parents that are listening right now, if you've gone through potty training, if you're thinking about it, as we said before, maybe you don't approach it going like, yay, I can't wait to potty train. It's going to be so much fun. So there is this sense of, oh boy, it's going to be a struggle. And it really can be. Um, And when I decided, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, one morning to potty train, I think I probably didn't tell my husband. I probably didn't think very much about it. I was like, yeah, we're just going to power through it, Mm -hmm. right? Because that's what happens in three days. It gets done because that's what all the books say. And so, you know, off with a diaper, no preparation. Here we go. And again, I think she didn't poop for like five days. And it was tremendously stressful for me, for her. I had not planned. I didn't know what I'm doing. I'm scrambling. I'm reading. You know, this is going to be dangerous. There's going to, and it was just such an unfortunate and preventable, as we now know. Mm experience when if you think about it it's kind of a big deal learning you know her little body learning to figure out okay I have to feel like I have to pee I have to hold the pee I have to go to the toilet I have to pull my pants I gotta sit on the toilet that's a lot of steps it's a lot and I totally didn't even think about that it was kind of obsessed with the results happening in three days yeah and of course it didn't right um so 
if anyone's gone through that, we we're with you. Yeah. <laughs> Kim and I are with you. And we knew we wanted to just, you know, we got to figure out what actually could be helpful for parents. Yeah. What could they do to not have to go through that? Well, and also, you know, just like in, in sleep and, and like we talked about in an earlier episode that, you know, if, if you did the boot camp with your child and it worked amazing, right? It's yes. totally possible for, um, for it yes. to work. I just want, like I wanted for sleep, I want parents to have options and I want to, them to have options that are outside of your one size fits all. This is all you got. Um, and so Alexis and I thought about, all right, well then what does that mean? What are some of the things that need to be factored in or aren't factored in in the boot camp approach that leads to a power struggle and most important leads to your child not being potty trained, <laughs> right? Yes, so, exactly. I know that one. And mm-hmm. just taking that time to reflect before you do it, who am I as a parent? Because I didn't factor myself in at all. Right. right. What's my style right. of parenting? How do I feel? You know, my daughter has sensory differences. I thought that was a non-relevant issue. And that's, you know, yeah. that's my child. She is an alert, yep. pretty intense, you know, girl. And I didn't factor that in at all as if she would fit into this box. Yeah. yeah. And some kids do. And that's wonderful. And some kids don't. Right. What can we help? Right. What choices can we give yeah. you? So factoring in sensory differences and um, factoring in your child's temperament and your own temperament, right? And sometimes, sometimes that means like picking a different parent to lead the potty coaching than yourself Mm -hmm. if it's a better match instead of a power struggle. Um, Factoring in your schedule. You know, if you're like, if your child's going to start preschool in two weeks, but you have, you know, a child that doesn't like changes, you might want to need to start earlier. You might have a family vacation to factor in, right? These are. I'm on the other day, Alexis, I have four kids, Mm -hmm. cannot stay three days in the house. What do I do? Right. Exactly. Right. Yep. Is there just no solution? Of course not. And I think Let's also, with her. you know, there's lots of, um, there's some confusion about readiness um, mm-hmm. and who determines what readiness is. And if you miss the window or don't miss the window, lots of shaming around that. And th- let's not also forget culture, right? Yeah. Um, and expectations in various cultures. And, you know, there are cultures that have their kids out of diapers by a year, end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and others who are not as open to talking about body parts and going to into the bathroom with their child as the adult. And so all of these are important things to factor in that are not in a one size fits all. I agree. And just having, I feel like parents and what I so am excited to do and talk about this course with parents is just, I feel like it's so much of it can't even be done in three days that can happen but just a parent approaching it saying maybe it will maybe it won't that's okay Mm -hmm. I'm approaching this with knowledge with calm because we know just like sleep just like eating Mm -hmm. new foods just like anything you do if a parent is there saying we got this and I'm calm about it children are going to react probably modeling the parent's yep. emotional state in that moment. Absolutely. That was powerful. Which was not me when I was crying and cleaning right. the pee. All of yeah. And not me in my moment. <laughs> not me in that moment. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And when we are calm like that and feel like we have a plan, we're more confident, more likely to follow yeah. through uh, consistently, and then yes. more likely to have success in general um, yeah. in potty training, both in empowering ourselves and our children, um, mm-hmm. who are, you know, a, a, a big part of this whole process, just like when they're learning to sleep and when they're learning to potty coach. So we're really excited to have created a course that gives parents options outside of a one size fits all and a boot camp approach. Um, and knowing that you may get your child potty trained in three days, or it might take two weeks. 
Mm-hmm. So, and what I love, Kim, and this is the same about all the sleep work that you do, and what I think is so overwhelming today, also about being a parent, is Googling potty training and coming up with 563,000 different resources of which I don't know which is quote unquote Mm -hmm. science based. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's talking to me. Is it someone's opinion? Mm -hmm. Is this fact based? So I love that all of this hard work for years now, I think we've been getting this ready is really research based, science based. Mm -hmm. We're not going to tell you anything that has not been proven. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm a real stickler for dotting my I's and crossing my T's, as you know, Alexis. Exactly. Um, so we've consulted with occupational therapists to talk about sensory processing and pediatricians who are experts in bedwetting and sleep medicine doctors talking about uh, sleep apnea and its effect on being able to stay dry at night. And we are really trying to to cover all the potential challenges you may have and give you solid, good quality ev- evidence-based advice. Mm-hmm. Staying dry at night. That's a big one. I love talking about that. Yep. We'll talk about that in our course too. Yep. And how that's not part of potty training. Mm-hmm. Uh, that we... How we don't have to potty train at night. Yeah. yeah. A huge win as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I went through that with my own um, second child mm-hmm. who was dry during the day for probably a good year um, before her body was ready to stay dry at night. And um, she's a young woman with no potty problems. <laughs> good, good to know. Even, even my daughter, I think, wore a diaper into, at night until she was four, mm-hmm. four and a half. And that was very stressful mm-hmm. until I realized that that is actually normal mm-hmm. yeah so yeah and, and it's what her body was capable of doing yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. well thank you so much i hope you all find this helpful if you want to learn more about our gentle potty coaching approach you can go to sleeplady.com download our myth busting guide on potty training and learn more about our course there thank you 